tribute to Wendy Anchibus. I first met Wendy Anchibus in 1979 when I went to Society Primary School as a young teacher to begin 12 of my most productive years in teaching. My first impression of her was that she was a very quiet person. However, behind that quietness, I noticed that she was very professional in her job and she went about it very meticulously.
she knew the children. I remember times when parents would call at the school and Miss Angela was gonna tell you the child's name, the class. She knew, I mean, with over 240 students, she knew every single child it seemed by name and nature. So even though she didn't teach classes per se, like we would have done every day, she knew every single child. She never lost the common touch. I'm glad that I had an opportunity to work under such a wonderful principal, consummate professional, confidant, person you could trust, person who could give good advice, person who gave not only good advice in terms of academics, but in terms of life. She scored high in ethics and morality. She was a fair lady. And uh, I am certainly glad that I had the privilege of working with her. I'm certainly glad for that. Miss Angelus, she did well. She inspired countless teachers and even parents. I, I always only heard good things about her. In fact, I remember um, many times I would meet people who would have either worked with her and they would ask me, how's Miss Angelus doing at St. John? In fact, one former teacher that worked with us at St. Joseph Primary told me, he said, Mr. Ewood, she's a lady. She's a wonderful lady. He would always tell me, Tell Miss Andrews I said hello. She's a lady. And that's exactly true. She was a wonderful lady. and glory we remember before you today our sister Wendy we thank you for giving her to us her family and friends to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage in your boundless compassion console us who mourn give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me though he die yet shall he live 
and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Bless be the name of the Lord. Let us pray, Almighty God. Remember before you today your servant Wendy, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We will now hear the tribute from Trevor. Good morning, family members, friends. This tribute is from the perspective of Wendy Antipas, the educator and principal of Mount Taylor, of St. John's Primary. Wendy Maureen Antibus was a phenomenal woman. This, sen this sentiment was expressed by Mr. Rodney Francis, who is here, maintenance supervisor at the Ministry of Education, on hearing of the passing of Wendy, or shall I say, Ms. Antibus, or ma'am, Senator that so we, as work colleagues, respectfully chose to refer to her. She was indeed a phenomenal woman who was many things to many persons in the education sector. The video tribute you recently witnessed before the service gave a snapshot of how her work colleagues felt about her. But more needs to be said about Ms. Anshibus as administrator, mentor, organizer, and friend. Undoubtedly, she brought her years of experience as teacher and senior teacher to the post of principal at the St. John's Primary School. As an administrator, she came and found humble facilities, and she set about to improve this, the office, bathrooms, and classrooms. Under her astute leadership, the academic performance of the students improve, as well as relations between parents and teachers, as she worked closely with the PTA under the presidency of Ms. Goza Gollop to raise funds to help towards the upliftment of the school. As administrator, she was not afraid to tell her staff members they were wrong, but she did it in a professional and dignified way. There are many times that members will pass by the office, see the door close, and we might be busy, busy about whom we'll be getting chastised or reprimanded, or whom we have gone to see advice. But you know, Ms. Archibus will never divulge the nature of that conversation in the office. So discreet a person she was. As a result, staff felt confident confiding in her. Also, as an administrator, she was a stickler for doing things the right way and ensuring the school's business got done. I remember early in her principalship, when we had some staff meetings fairly close in succession, a senior member of staff exclaimed, wait, being a cousin to all these staff meetings. We all chuckled, including Ms. Antribus, but you know, if in her judgment another staff meeting was necessary, she proceeded to do so. As far as she was concerned, the school's business was paramount. She was also a very fierce competitor as an administrator. In a very quiet way, she instilled confidence in her students 
to go out and compete well. She had to practice quiz teams herself, or she ensured they were prepared for any competition. As a result, the school received accolades in Bible quizzes, private sports, singing, and other competitions. Ms. Antibus, the organizer. To speak about her before mentioning this feature of her stewardship will be a great misrepresentation of her tenure. When fellow principals could not find a circular, what they did, call Ms. Antibus. During staff meetings, and one was unsure of what the previous matter was, she will remark, let me check my notes. And you can guarantee you will get a response to that query. If you don't know about the copious notes she took, then you couldn't have spent much time in her presence. She seemed to know where to find everything. I challenge any principal to have a foiling system better than hers. She was simply amazing as an organizer. Ms. Angibus, the mentor. I don't know if it was applied of the Ministry of Education, but it was no coincidence that all her senior <coughs> teachers were promoted to principals. In addition, I can recall staff members who also became senior teachers, subject coordinators, all due to her leadership style. You see, at St. John's Primary, you were given the latitude to head committees, coordinate programs, run with bright ideas. She was therefore building leadership capacity before us realizing it. Ms. Samantha Haynes, a past student of hers, also a past staff member who is presently a senior teacher, puts it nicely when she said to me, Ms. Anshibus nurtured me and gave me wings to fly. New principles were either placed under her guidance by the Ministry of Education or on their own initiative sought advice from her. Such was the high esteem in which she was held as a senior principal. I am proud to say she was my mentor and each time we prepared for a staff meeting as principal, I would hear her advice in my subconscious with these words, Mr. Waldron, when you go to your staff meetings, always have an agenda. This may sound like simple advice, but in know of cases where minutes are not organized, where they were not adopted, discussions waver simply, simply because there was no agenda to follow and the chair was not adequately prepared. I don't expect anyone who was trained under her guidance to operate that way. It's Antibus as friend. It's simply amazing the number of persons who express Ms. Antibus as their friend, whether they knew her as a work colleague or just interacting with her. Person who heard about her passing view her as a friend. This is a great testimony to a lady who will have interacted with high officials and with the lowly before losing the common touch. To her garden, Harry, she's a friend whom he miss dearly. To Miss Graves here, retired acting principal and close friend, she is still sorrowing. To her past neighbor, Margaret, she will miss those long conversations. Miss Angelus had many past and present work colleagues who kept in contact with her on a regular basis via the telephone. The teaching fraternity, or clique, shall I say, of the now defunct Society Primary School, continue to remember her as a close colleague. Their past students, who finally remember her as the principal who kept you very informed at prayers. Even after you were standing, you were here after she would come to give her remarks as principal. I have two things to tell you. And you will stand there for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> because she made sure she got over her points. I also know of those colleagues from St. John Primary who remember her as that friend who sang so well that the singing at the school's independence program on the 29th of November 2007 at 3 p.m. brought about an earth tremor. 
uh, the school which turned out, of course, not to be true because we learned afterwards the tremor was early away. <laughs> Wendy Maureen Antrobus, educator par excellence. We thank God for sharing with, uh, sharing with us the teaching fraternity. Your virtues as administrator, mentor, organizer, and friend will be missed, but not forgotten. May you rest in peace and rise in glory. Stand and uh, sing the hymn, I am dying, O Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him 
to the ones who seek him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Aunt Wendy is waiting for the Lord. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, we will all stand and sing. Good morning. The second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, reading verses 2 to 7. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. All the, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I 
make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The word of the Lord. I have the eulogy. family and friends. Today, we say our final goodbye to a warm-hearted, earnest, nice, determined, and dare I say, youthful lady. A daughter, sister, aunt, cousin, sister-in-law, dear friend, and mentor. Wendy Maureen Antrobus was born January 6, 1955, to Offington and Edna Antrobus in the rural, picturesque parish of St. John. Her parents were the typical middle-class family. Her dad, Offington, worked at the Juicy Factory, and her mom, Edna, a full-time stay-at-home mother and seamstress. Wendy was the fourth child and second daughter to what would ultimately become a family of five. Her sister Ruth, brothers David and Don, and older sister Coral made up this close-knit family. The family grew up and was very close. But in the early 1950s, tragedy struck as her older brother David sadly passed away at the tender age of eight. Wendy would never get to know him. Battered, but not broken, Wendy and the family had to continue with their faith in God and carry on. But in another chain of unfortunate events, her father sadly passed away due to an acute, untreatable illness. This brought the family even closer, as Wendy was left to care for her mother sister, and only remaining brother Dawn. The strike of bad luck was not over. In 1982, the family's last surviving son and only male figure in the household Dawn lost his life in a tragic motorcycle accident. Within a decade, the family suffered unimaginable losses but the sisters stayed together and continued to be strong. During that time, her older sister Carol moved to Canada to work and marry the love of her life and start a family. Her younger sister Ruth had moved to the United States and she too got married to Evan, but Wendy made the ultimate decision to stay in her beloved Barbados to care for her mother. Despite the loss and the migration of her family members, Wendy's relationship with God grew stronger and she continued to play an active role at the Holy Cross Church where she worshiped for many years until she joined the congregation with Dr. Mears at the St. John Parish Church. Wendy's passion and calling in life was for teaching, which began at a very young age. As a young girl, Wendy often spent hours at her close friend Norma's house across the street, where she would frequently set up chairs and play the role of teacher. The chairs in the room were her pupils, but sometimes her brother Don, along with her sisters Ruth and Carol, and even Norma would participate. 
the young Wendy's classroom was run with efficiency and discipline, and her pupils had to give her their undivided attention. How can a cheer give undivided <laughs> attention? Rest assured, even that disobedient cheer was suffered greatly under Wendy's whip. But it was Norma's father, a teacher himself, who after noticing young Wendy's role play as a teacher, furnished her, no pun intended, with a chalkboard and chalk as needed. Norma's father mentored the young Wendy, who at the time was no more than six or seven years old. She was always eager to learn and had the desire to teach. Her passion even manifested in the way she presented herself. For example, while at school playing with Norma and her other friends, Wendy insisted that they not only call her Miss Pambley, but do so in a respectful manner. This also entertained the adults as well, but everyone knew that Wendy was destined to be a teacher, and a good one at that. Wendy attended Society Mid School as a junior, and then gained a sound secondary education at the Modern High School, the best private high school on the island at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fulfilling her lifelong, lifelong dream, Wendy began her teaching career at a tender age of 18 and started at the first school she attended, St. John Mix School. To make a success of her passion, she pursued tertiary education and earned a Bachelor of Arts with honors from the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus and a diploma in education from Erdison Teachers Training College with UWI certification with distinction. Wendy was later transferred to St. Joseph Primary School as a senior teacher when the position became vacant. After many years of hard work and persistence, her world came full circle as she was appointed principal at her beloved St. John Primary School until her retirement. Outside of school and her career, Wendy had a big heart. Although having no children, she saw the students of St. John Primary School, as well as her nieces and nephews, as her own. She helped friends and family when needed, while having a no-nonsense approach that she applied to all aspects of her life. She enjoyed the simple things, having regular telephone conversations with her sisters overseas and many of her friends here on island. I was privileged to have had such telephone conversations as she treated me as a daughter, giving sound advice and being frank when the need arose. Wendy loved and was devoted to her family, friends, and above all, God. Despite her true love for God and family, her faith was tested yet again in 2018 when she lost both her mother and sister, just four months apart. But despite that heartache and misfortune, Wendy continued to be a role model and a positive light to those around her. Throughout that pain and hurt, she remained steadfast in prayer and grounded by the love this family shared. Wendy mentored, cultivated, and taught a generation of students. Countless of them now have senior positions in government and the private sector. Her friends and family also benefited from her wisdom and kind heart. She was selfless. Everyone that knew her described her as a queen that walked with dignity, exuding confidence and posture. Wendy was also very meticulous. Things had to be done in a particular order. So meticulous was she that if you go to the supermarket with her, the groceries had to be picked up from the shelf in accordance with how they were written on the list. So even if she wanted toilet paper and you passed the toilet paper aisle going down and it was not written in that order, you had to go down and then come back up to pick up that toilet paper. 
and the poor checkout person, he had to pack the groceries according to how they were placed on the belt. Supermarket trips were always debatable, but very, 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 there were always fun times to have with Auntie Wendy. It would be remiss of me not to mention that Auntie Wendy, as she was affectionately called by my son and I, had a humorous side to her. She loved a good joke. I remember on one of my Sunday visits, she shared with me a prank she pulled on Cornwall. Cornwall knows who he is. Mm -hmm. So he called and she changed her voice to make him feel he had the wrong number. And he was convinced that he did. He called again and she changed up her voice to make believe he did have the wrong number. Cornwall seemed to be a sucker for punishment and called the third time. Auntie Wendy, in her changed voice again, listen, man, you ain't know you interrupting this old woman from watching the news and eating she dinner. You would have had to be there to hear the kick she got out of it and her infectious laugh. That is one of the characteristics of Auntie Wendy I will always remember. Many of her friends have stated that once you became a friend of Wendy, you're a friend for life, as she would never leave you or let you down. When she said she would do something, rest assured, it would be done. Wendy lived a private and simple life, enjoying many of the simple pleasures that life had to offer. She will always be remembered as loyal, caring, a generous sister, dignified aunt, and a faithful friend. She has left an indelible footprint in the sands of time and will be greatly missed. Her life is one that can be emulated and the epitome for which we must give persons their flowers whilst they can receive them. I am happy some of us got to give Wendy her flowers even if not all roses. As we mourn, I am sure that she would not want us to mourn for the long haul, but would rather us accept that she's now free. I can hear her saying, fill not your heart with pain or sorrow, but remember me in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smiles, I've only gone to rest a little while. Although my leaving caused pain and grief, my going has eased my heart and given me relief. So dry your eyes and remember me, not as I am now, but how I used to be. I will remember you and look down with a smile. Understanding in your heart, I will only be gone for a little while. As long as I have the love of all of you, I can live my life in the hearts of all of you. To Carl, Sean, Justin, Lydia, Dr. Evan, and Evan Jr., and other family members, I say to you, her life has ended prematurely, but for sure, she has left a stain in my heart that the toughest detergent cannot remove her thoughtfulness, her love, and her buoyant disposition is something that we can all treasure. The pain and the hurt will not just fade. There will be more questions and answers, but lean on and trust in God that Wendy served for you, served for him, and your answers, and he will take care of you. To her close friends, Ms. Pambali has left without warning, but we must find solace in the fact that she has moved on to a better life, closer to God, and that one day we will all be reunited with her in heaven. Our tears must be tears of joy, knowing and believing that she is with our master. Wendy, we will remember 
Not just that you died, but that you lived. Your life gave us memories too beautiful to forget. It is a legacy that will continue forever in our hearts, Auntie Wendy, until we meet again. May you rest in the peace that you so deserve. Now sing the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Let us stand. Good morning, Canon Jeffrey Mears. Good morning to the families and friends. A poem for my friend, Wendy. The next few words, although a poem, summarize my thoughts, like many of you, for my friend of over 18 years, Wendy. Can you imagine a pain so deep down inside that it cannot be summarized in words you simply can write? A pain that touches your toes up to the top of the ceiling. 
These circumstances has left me feeling alone that you are not even there on the phone. Don't matter how many oceans or rivers I cry, you're forever in my heart. I never say goodbye. Many days I sit and wonder what could we be talking about today. You always put a smile on my face don't matter what the problem was. All I had to do was call you and you would make everything better. The day that I heard that you were taken from us, my heart broke. All I wanted was for one more day to hear you say, Gozel. I know you are in a better place. It hurts so much because there's nothing I can do or say that can make you come back to me, there is no one thing that's plain to see, that one day we'll be together again. And now until you will always remain my best friend. You are with me every day. I feel you with every breath. Your thought is with me, with every decision I make. You have been with me until now, and it's hard to face that you are finally gone and I will never see you again. Now you don't have to worry, for your love will be passed on, cause even though you left me, you're always in my heart. Sleep well, Wendy, love always, thank you. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Words taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and uh, verse 5. Most people, if asked what they want from life, may say, a long and a happy life. Having established that that is what we may want from life and recognizing that we do not have absolute control over our life, we then set about planning for such. In a study done some time ago which asked the question, what does it take to live to a hundred? In 10 of the factors chosen, the number two, one and two, dealt with social life, our social life. Number two dealt with close relationships, and the top priority dealt with social integration. The author of the study suggested that we need uh, in social relationships persons whom we can uh, sit with, persons whom we can call, persons who may provide uh, money for us in the eventuality that we run out of money. But above all of that, they talked about social integration. Who are those persons outside of your friends and your family that you interact with? Do you speak with the postman when the postman comes? Do you speak with your gardener? Do you speak with the cashier? either at the supermarket or the person who runs your gas. We, according to the study, may stand a good chance of living to 100 if we have a good social life. 
depending upon the relationships that we create will determine the quality of our lives. The study followed persons for about seven years or so, and this is what they came up with. As we reflect on this pandemic, and we look at those countries that were able to do the best, to handle the pandemic in the best way, Denmark came up as one of those countries and when it was looked at further, it realized that in Denmark, what stood out was the element of trust. They realized that the people in Denmark trusted their government and they trusted each other. And so Denmark is one of those first, first um, countries that can fully reopen. The profession that enjoys the greatest level of trust, I think, is still the teaching profession. You may say otherwise. You dare to say otherwise? Hmm? No. The teaching profession, but not just the teaching profession, I think the primary school teaching profession yeah, stands out more uh, in all of the professions as one uh, where trust is very much a part. In one of our, our colleagues in our prayer book, the writer sets up our relationship to our children in these words. It says, Father, we bring our children to you. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. May we never hinder, but help them. That's one of the prayers we use in our prayer book. The Gospel writer John sets up this triad of relationships a long time ago. Where he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. My father is the vine dresser or gardener, depending on which translation you want to use. John goes on to say to us, a branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In this feeding relationship, there is the need for pruning or the need for gardening. So the gardener breaks off every branch that does not bear fruit so that it may be clean and bear more fruit. Our worth in life depends on where we are placed and how we use the opportunities that are given to us. How sensitive are we to the social needs of others? How many of us are prepared to take the phone and call the other? How many of us are prepared to receive the call. So sometimes when we see the telephone number come up, we may sidestep the phone because we may say in our own hearts and minds, I really don't want to talk to she now. I don't want to talk to him <laughs> now. And especially as we grow older and uh, our circle of friends become less, the need for such becomes greater. But some who feel that they're a little bit stronger may very well say, 
We can say the same thing over and over and over again. We need to be aware of how much that social interaction, that social integration means to persons, especially those who are living alone. Today the church celebrates the, the feast, uh, the, the celebration of the death of Martin Luther, that great reformer. Part of the story of Martin Luther, uh, Martin Luther says that his father wanted him to become a lawyer, but he wanted to become a monk. He eventually got his way. He was nurtured by his time, and he used the opportunity to make a difference in where he was. It was as a monk that he made a difference to the world. You remember putting all those things on the door and that sort of thing. Martin's life is a reminder to us that we do not have to live our lives trying to satisfy what someone else wants us to become. We do not have to take things as they are especially if we think that they should be different. A death and or a funeral service offers us the opportunity for reflection and even an opportunity for change. You may discover something in your life that you need to change. You may not have the courage, but I hope you do. As you reflect, how many of us are happy with our lives so far? I wouldn't ask you to raise your hand, but I would invite you to reflect upon it for yourself. What about the quality of the relationships that you have created or that you are creating. As we reflect on how much, much are we convinced that we have lived the way we wanted to and not lived a life to please others. I wouldn't go as far as to, to, to quote the song, I did it my way, but, but, but the, the sentiment behind it is, is similar, right? It's similar. How many of us as teachers, adults, or whatever, have allowed our students to choose their path with gentle guidance. How many of us have said it to those whom we had some kind of control or influence, whatever, this is what you should be doing and you create all the opportunities so should do, they do what you want them to do and all the stumbling blocks so they should do not do what they want to do. If that is part of our story, I'm not sure how much we can do about it now. But there may still be opportunity somewhere along the lines for us to see things differently and uh, to do them differently. We've come this morning to eulogize, to praise, to give thanks for the life and the witness of our sister, Wendy. And you have heard a lot of wonderful things about her 
in her sojourn here. While at St. John is wet around so-called chairman of the school board, I had the opportunity to watch Wendy display her motherly instincts. And her motherly instincts extended to the children, extended to the teachers, and to the parents. And I wrote this without the, what's the word we're looking for there? Without seeing what Trevor had to say or what the school tribute was. Just for my own uh, observations, these are some of the things that I saw about her. She was like the gardener helping the plants to grow, pruning when necessary and digging out the weeds when necessary for the children and for the adults in her life as well. This motherly instinct and inclination was extended to her own mother as well. I had the opportunity of visiting her mother to share in the sacrament with her. And in conversations with Wendy, she would always be talking about her mother and showing her concern for the mother. What's remarkable is that she exhibited these motherly tendencies even though she herself was not a biological mother. And so I want to join uh, with you this morning to thank God for her life and uh, weakness. We want to thank God for her understanding the value of true relationships. She did not live to 100, even though she exhibited all those characteristics which the study said would make it possible for us to live to 100. But longevity is not all there is to life. What I think trumps longevity is relationships. And uh, Wendy made up for that numerical difference by the quality of her relationships. And so I joined you this morning in the, uh, commending her to the God whom she served, both at the Church of the Holy Cross and uh, in her more recent days, uh, Parish Church of St. John, and uh, to wish that the God who has called her will be the God who will continue to accompany her the rest of her journey, whatever that journey is, wherever that journey is, that that God, her God, will be her friend and companion, and as much as she was a friend and a companion to many, in her earthly journey. A reminder today then that as Jesus said, I am the branches and the vine and you are the branches and my father is the gardener. May we do all that we can to develop healthy and worthwhile relationships as long as we will say the breath remains in our body for the remainder of our earthly journey.
we will now have him through all the changing scenes of life. For our sister Wendy, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Wendy and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister Wendy to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister Wendy to the joys of heaven. Our sister Wendy was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table of your heavenly kingdom. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Wendy. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. 
me. Let us commit ourselves to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Wendy, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend you, your servant Wendy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. We sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. May she rest in peace. Amen.
I'm great on this family. Yes, I will not here. anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices, my body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In short and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we command to Almighty God, our sister Wendy, we commit our body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. But when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith, 
of your name may have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life of those they love. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Blessed assurance.
friend we have in Jesus. When peace like a river.
Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up the Lord of his countenance upon her and give her peace this day forevermore. Christ our Lord is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Every blessing to the family. Thank you. Thank you.